Hi, I'm Alan Loft, Senior Audio Video Advisor for AxiomAudio.com. Here with today's tip on subwoofers. What does a subwoofer do? Well, it's really just a big, low-pressure powered air pump that pump, pumps low bass frequencies, whether they're for orchestral music, rock and roll, or low frequency effects, explosions and the like for blockbuster movies. And because they're sort of air pumps, they all have their own amplifiers and the larger the subwoofer, or rather, the larger the room you're trying to fill with low bass, the bigger the subwoofer you need. Because subwoofer is a kind of dumb object. It doesn't care where you sit in the room. It just sees the total volume of space in front of the sub that it has to fill. So if you have a den, for example, or a smallish bedroom, you could go with something like the EP125, this little sub here, which has an 8-inch driver and an internal 125-watt amplifier. Moving from that up to, say, a typical living room, which is about 2,100 cubic feet, that's the length of a room times its width times its height. Typical living room is about 19 or 20 feet long, 13 feet wide, with an 8-foot ceiling. Now, with a room like that, you can use something like our Axiom EP175 sub, which has a 10-inch driver on the front. And as you can see, it's got a bigger box and a 175-watt amplifier. Now, when you get into bigger rooms with vaulted ceilings, great rooms, uh, and rooms larger than about 2,000 cubic feet, then you're up into using larger subwoofers and sometimes more than one subwoofer. For example, right down here we have our really highly reviewed Axiom EP500 sub with a 12-inch driver, dual voice coil unit, and a 500-watt internal amplifier. This sub, you can use it in a room of 2,000 cubic feet for spectacular deep bass effects down to the very bottom of human hearing, below 20 hertz, even 17, 18 hertz. Um, so if you're into blockbuster explosions and tremendously powerful effects with music like pipe organs or bass drums or rock and roll, this EP500 will do one heck of a job. But the great thing is, because it's a dual voice coil unit and it has a huge amplifier, this EP500 you can put in rooms up to say five and 6,000 cubic feet. So it'll fill very large rooms with powerful, deep, tight, spectacular low bass of very musical quality with orchestral or rock and roll. This is how to use multiple subwoofers to get deep, smooth, powerful bass in various listening locations in your room. When you just use one subwoofer, the pressure from the sub builds up into what are called standing waves. And these create areas where you'll hear powerful deep bass, and then if you shift two or three feet away, the bass will almost disappear. This is because of standing waves, and the standing waves are dictated by the particular dimensions of your listening room. You can't predict ahead of time where a subwoofer will sound its best. So don't set up a system based on the notion, yes, I'm going to put the subwoofer up here next to the fireplace near the flat screen TV, because you may be putting the sub in a spot that's in a a node of sorts where you won't get much deep bass. You have to experiment. But one good way is to use two subwoofers. And what two subwoofers do is equalize out some of the variations in uh, standing waves throughout the room. A typical setup might be putting a subwoofer like this EP500 on one side of the room and an identical subwoofer on the opposite side of the room. Or you could even use a smaller subwoofer if you already have a subwoofer. But it's nice if they're identical subs. The other alternative is to put one subwoofer at the front of the room and another subwoofer at the back of the room. 
In the next tip, I'll tell you how to do the crawling around the room on all fours to find out where the optimal spot is for a single subwoofer. And it's not, it's a, a test that works very well. It's a bit of a drag to do, but it's worth doing to get good, powerful bass at your listening seat. I'm Alan Loft for AxiomAudio.com. Thanks for watching.